Hello, my name is Morgan Hinchy. And I'm Marissa Sula. And this is our instructional video on complex degrees of freedom analysis. Previously, Dr. Ledoux created an introduction to degrees of freedom analysis where he defined what degrees of freedom were, why they are important in solving a problem and picking a basis, um, how to consider each component, and how to set up the overall analysis. Since then, we've um, the course has progressed into more complicated topics that include recycle streams and reactions and multi-unit systems, which we will now address, and hopefully they will become more clear to you and you can succeed later in the course. So we um, made up this problem that has multi-units, a reaction, and a recycle stream. I also want to mention that we won't be solving for an answer in the end. We just want to make sure that you understand how to set up degrees of freedom for a multi-unit. So first, we, the given information that we have is a degree of inflation of 1. Um, we have a flow rate for the outlet stream of carbon dioxide of 10 moles an hour. We also know the components of the inlet stream being carbon monoxide and dry air. Um, we're also given fractional convergence for single pass and overall system. So degree of freedom analysis is really helpful because it can help you decide which system to solve first and if you can actually solve the system. So the first step in solving this problem would be to separate this complicated system into its subparts. So we want to start off with the mixer. So draw your system boundary around the system that you're going to be evaluating. So we've already drawn, redrawn the mixer down here. The first thing you want to do is um, evaluate your system. And this is a steady state system. It's open. And there's no reaction going on within this system boundary. So there's no reaction. And your mass balance equation is just n equals out. So to do degrees of freedom, this is just like the simple problems now that we had been working on before. So you start off with counting your unknowns. To find the number of unknowns, you just count all of the species in each of the streams that are crossing the system boundary. So here you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 unknowns. Next, you want to look at how many mass balances you can perform. So you can do a mass balance for each different species in the system. So there you have carbon monoxide, nitrogen, and oxygen. There are only three species, so you can do three mass balances. Now you want to look at other specifications that you are offered from the problem statement. So you know that carbon monoxide and air are being mixed. So you know that mole fraction of air is 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. So that gives you one fraction that you can use and add to your degree of freedom. You don't have any other information about the system, so you just calculate the degree of freedom. You do 7 minus 4, and you have 3. So because this is greater than 0, it means you can't solve the system, so we have to find something else to solve. So move on to the next system, which is the reactor. So you want to draw your system boundary again around the reactor. And this is, system is steady state again, open, but now there's a reaction inside of the system boundary. So this changes the degree of freedom slightly because now you have to take into account the extent of reaction. Your mass balance equation is now in minus out plus the stoichiometric coefficient times the extent of reaction. So extent of reaction counts as an extra unknown. You want to write that down first and you also have your unknown species. So you have one reaction, so there's one extent of reaction that you don't know. To count the unknowns, it's the same as before. You just have all the species entering and exiting. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now you can do mass balances again. So mass balances is the, <laughs> so mass balances is the same as before. You just count all the different species that you have. So you have carbon monoxide, nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. So you have four different species. You can do four different mole balances or mass balances with those. Um, now, for this system, for the reactor, you are given the single pass fractional conversion. So this is a useful specification, so you can add that to your degree of freedom. And you don't have any more information about this system now. So you go ahead and calculate your degree of freedom. So it's 7 minus 5 is 2. 
that's still greater than zero, you still can't solve it. The overall fractional conversion can't be used here because that has to do with the overall system and it doesn't tell you anything about the streams directly entering and exiting the reactor. All right, so for the reactor, even though we do have a degree of completion equal to one, and you might think that that could count as an extra specification, we can't use it in our degree of freedom analysis because we've already taken it into account once by not writing O2 in stream three. So because the degree of completion is one and O2 is a limiting reactant, it's completely used up and we've already used that piece of information by not including it here, so we can't count it again in the degree of freedom. Uh, these individual systems aren't working. Uh, we're not able to solve them, so we're gonna move on to the overall system next. So now we'll evaluate the overall system. So to begin, we'll draw a system boundary. The most important part about this system boundary is that we are not going to be including the recycled stream. And when accounting for species in the different streams, you only account for those in that which cross over the system boundary. So as you can see, this recycled stream does not cross over, and that becomes pretty important. The first um, step will do is to identify what our system is. So it's still um, at steady state and open. And there's also a reaction occurring. Because the reaction is occurring within the system boundaries, we don't care where it is, which subunit it's in, it's within the system boundaries, so we still take it into account. Um, next we will, we will um, just as before, count our unknowns in our streams, and we have a reaction, so for extent of reaction to take into account. The only two streams that cross our system boundary are one and four, so these are the only ones we'll be looking at. And so you can see there's three here and three here, so it makes a total of six unknowns, one of extent of reaction. We next, we still have the same four species that we have before, carbon monoxide, N2O2, and carbon dioxide. So a total of four mass balances. Now let's identify what kind, other kind of specifications we have to help us solve this problem. We have a flow rate in stream four, which we can use. We also have a fractional conversion of the overall um, carbon, carbon monoxide, which relates the carbon monoxide that enters to what exits, which is also helpful to us. We have a flow rate Of the outlet stream, we only have one. We also have a fractional conversion, um, which here is only one. The fractional conversion for a single pass reactor is not relevant here because we're not um, looking at stream two or stream three. And finally, we have a mole balance that we determined earlier given the that dry air was in the inlet. So we don't know what the fraction of CO2 or of CO is in relation to these but we have one relevant, which is all that we need to make the degrees of freedom zero, meaning that the overall system is solvable. After you finish solving the overall system, you'll have information that can be used in each of the other subunits, which can be used to solve for whatever we're looking for in this problem. Um, so key takeaways from this problem is that when you're um, taking into account a reaction, anytime that it occurs within the system boundary, you will need to include this reaction as we saw in the mixer because there wasn't a reaction within the system boundaries, we didn't take it into account. Also, another key thing to note is the only streams you take into account are those that cross over the system boundary, which is why in this final degrees of freedom, we did not take into account the outlet stream. So thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed our video. And if you have any further questions, I'm sure Ledoux would love to see you in his office.